Eid al-Zahra. For those of you who are not familiar, many of you may be familiar with Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha, Eid al-Ghadir. But the ninth of Rabi'u al-Awwal is also a time of jubilation for the Ahlul Bayt for two main reasons. Eid al-Zahra is an Eid of Wilaya and it's an Eid of Bara'a. On the ninth of Rabi'u al-Awwal, 260 years after the Hijrah, marks the commencement, the beginning of the Imama of the 12th Imam, Al Imam Sahib Al Asri Wa Zaman, Salawatullahi Alaihi. Allahumma Salli Ala Muhammad Wa Ali Muhammad. So, how can we relate the commencement of the Imam of the 12th Imam to Lady Fatima? Alayhi salam? You see, brothers and sisters, after the death of the Holy Prophet, the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi largely ignored what was announced on the day of Ghadir. Now you may say, how could it be possible that all of the Sahaba, the vast majority of them did not support Ali ibn Abi Talib? How could this be? If I recall, Allah tells us in the Quran, when Musa left Bani Israel for 40 days, they left Tawheed. If the Ashab of Musa deviated in the absence of Musa, why does it surprise you that history is repeating itself? After the death of the Holy Prophet, for various reasons, Amir al-Mu'mineen salam was sidelined. And the first defender of Ali ibn Abi Talib after the death of the Prophet was Fatima to Zahra Salawatullahi Alayha. Lady Fatima Alayhi Salam, she was the first defender of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And she did not support Ali ibn Abi Talib just because he was her husband. Fatima to Zahra Alayhi Salam understood that yes, Ali ibn Abi Talib is my husband, but more important than that, he is Allah's hujjah on earth. He is the imam of the time. Therefore, brothers and sisters, Fatima to Zahra understood that supporting Ali ibn Abi Talib and helping him regain the divine right that was given to him to rule over the ummah was necessary for the spread of justice. You know, when we speak about the individuals who usurp the Khilafah from Ali ibn Abi Talib, this is not just a Muslim problem. This was a crime against humanity. When you take the kursi away from Ali ibn Abi Talib, you committed a crime against humanity because you deprived humanity from the justice of Ali ibn Abi Talib. From the wisdom of Ali ibn Abi Talib, you deprive the Ummah of decades of leadership from the nafs of Rasulullah. You deprived humanity from decades of leadership under the banner of Imam al Mujtaba, Imam al Hussein. Can you imagine the world we would be living in today if Ahlul Bayt actually ruled and people allowed them to rule? So when Sahib al Asri wa Zaman begins his imama, this is something that brings joy to Lady Fatima. Why? Because this is the imam who will achieve what she tried to achieve after the death of the Prophet. We have a hadith that is recorded in the books of Ahlul Sunnah and in the books of our own ulama, where the Holy Prophet says, Oh. You know, some people are always afraid that the world is going to come to an end. If the Imam has not appeared, believe me, the world is not going to end. Rasulullah says, if there were to remain a single day left in this dunya, only one day, 
between dunya and day of judgment. Rasulullah says Allah would prolong that day. Hatta yab'ath Allah rajulan min wuldi. Allah would prolong that day until a man from my sons emerges. Yuwatu ismuhu ismi. His name is my name. Our 12th Imam, he also has the name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. Yamla'u al-arwa qistan wa adla kama mulayat dhulman wa jawra. Rasulullah says he will fill not just the Middle East. You know, we would give a Nobel Prize to someone who solves the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. We'll give him a Nobel Prize. If you can establish justice in one region in the Middle East, this is a big achievement. Rasulullah says, this son of mine, Imam Sahib al-Asr al-Zaman, he will establish justice and equity in the entire world. Can you imagine the type of leader it requires to be able to do something like that? It's difficult to establish justice in your house, in your city, in your country. Imam Sahib al-Asr al-Zaman, he will be able to do something that Anbiya have been dreaming of, which is to establish the kingdom of God on earth. So Eid al-Zahra is a celebration of the beginning, the commencement of the Imama of our Imam. You know, we read about Ali ibn Abi Talib, Imam al-Hassan. We, we, when we address Imam al Hussein, we say, Ya laytana kunna ma'akum. The 12th Imam is with you. If you want to know how you would have been with Ali ibn Abi Talib, ask yourself, what is your relationship with your Imam, your living Imam? So one side, one aspect of Eid al-Zahra is that it's a celebration of wilaya, that the torch of Imam has been passed and received by the final Imam of Ahlul Bayt, the one who will establish justice. Secondly, there is an aspect of bara'ah that we remember on this day. Imam al Hussein السلام, was martyred on the 10th of Muharram in the year 61 after the Hijrah, yes? And indeed, there is no tragedy, there is no calamity that has transpired on earth that was more inhumane than this tragedy. This is why you find the traditions say that the women of Ahlul Bayt would not beautify themselves after the day of Ashura. Until the ninth of Rabi'ul Awwal, 66 years after the Hijrah, so five years after Karbala, news reaches Al Muhammad that one of the murderers of Imam Al Hussein has been killed. Umar ibn Sa'ad brought a lot of grief to the Ahlul Bayt. Umar ibn Sa'ad was one of the commanders of the army of Yazid on the day of Ashura. Umar ibn Sa'ad was the first one to shoot an arrow towards the camp of Imam al Hussein. Umar ibn Sa'ad was the one who gave the order for the bodies of the shuhada to be crushed under the hooves of the horses. This is Umar ibn Sa'ad. Umar ibn Sa'ad was the one who told Harmala, hit the neck of Abdullah al radiyah This man brought so much grief and agony to the family of the Prophet. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a sunnah that has never changed. And that is, the one who attacks the people of God on earth, Allah humiliates him in dunya even before akhir. You find on the 9th of Rabi'ul Awwal, 66 years after the Hijrah, five years after Karbala, Mukhtar ibn Ubaidillah al Thaqafi kills Umar ibn Sa'ad. You find that on the 9th of Rabi'ul Awwal, when Umar ibn Sa'ad was murdered, this was the first time in five years that Imam al-Sajjad smiled. Five years, no smiling. Five years, 
the Hashimiyat would not put kuhul on their eyes. But this was a day of relief for them because the enemies of Allah were punished. We call this day Farhatu Zahra, which literally means the happiness, the joy of Zahra. But do you know what brings more joy to Fatima to Zahra, even more joy than the defeat of the enemies of Ahlul Bayt? It's for you and I to learn how to defeat an nafsul ammar. We have, Allah has external enemies throughout the earth. But some of us, the worst enemies that we have in our lives is not external. It's the nafs that you have that encourages you to defy Allah Azza wa Jal. 